This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but more on that later. It's been a long wait, but the Cybertruck is almost here and it's going to be awesome. While there are still quite a bit of things that we don't know about the Cybertruck, new details are starting to leak out. And now thanks to information shared by Matthew Donegan Ryan, who was able to attend Tesla's recent investor day, I have quite a few exciting Cybertruck updates to share with you. So stick around, you're not going to want to miss this. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. Tesla investor Matthew Donegan Ryan, who goes by at Matthew DR on Twitter, was one of the lucky 50 retail investors who were invited to attend Tesla's recent investor day in person, which gave Matthew the opportunity to not only see one of the latest pre-production iterations of the Cybertruck, but also to ask various Tesla executives questions about the Cybertruck, including Tesla's head designer, Franz von Holzhausen. Now, as we dive into this, I wanna say a special thank you not only to Matthew Donegan Ryan, who gave me permission to share images from his Twitter thread and portions of his Cybertruck walk around on YouTube. But I also want to say thank you to Rob Maurer from Tesla Daily, who also allowed me to use portions of the Cybertruck walk around video that he shared on YouTube. I will link to both of the full videos down below in the video description. And I definitely recommend that you go over and subscribe to both of these channels and check them both out on Twitter as well. On March 10th, Matthew tweeted out what he called the ultimate Tesla Cybertruck Terra thread. This thread contains information that Matthew learned at the Investor Day event that he was able to attend and based on questions that he was able to ask various Tesla executives about the Cybertruck. Now we know based on comments made by Franz von Holzhausen in a recent Ride the Lightning podcast interview that was published back in January this year, that the Cybertruck design is basically finished. However, with all of Tesla's vehicles, even those that are in production right now, Tesla is constantly trying to make improvements and tweaks to those vehicles. So as Franz made very clear in this interview, there really isn't a totally pencils down time for Tesla when it comes to their vehicles. Near the beginning of the Twitter thread, Matthew echoed this and wrote, The vehicle on display at Investor Day is a Cybertruck pre-production beta, meaning if the truck was released today, it would be configured like this. Tesla is never pencils down, so I expect to see changes in the release candidates and later the production units. With that being said, Elon recently confirmed that the Cybertruck um, should go into production sometime this summer. And since that's only a few months away and production equipment is being installed as I speak, I don't anticipate any major changes to the vehicle between now and then. So the details that Matthew shared about the Cybertruck from the Investor Day event in this Twitter thread should be very relevant to the final production design and the pre production version on display at the event should be very close to the production version as well. With all that being said, I want to dive into various new details that were shared by Matthew on Twitter about the Cybertruck. But before I do that, I want to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. If you are thinking about installing a solar and a battery backup system, or if you currently have such a system, you definitely need to check out Span. Unlike traditional electrical panels, the Span Smart Panel allows you to monitor and track your energy usage and solar generation remotely through an easy to use iOS or Android app. Also, when combined with a battery backup system like a Tesla Powerwall, it can help you extend your battery backup time by somewhere around 40% on average. Find out more and get a quote at span.io or click the link in the video description. And if you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put cleaner watt in the comments section so Span knows that I sent you. One of the first big pieces of information that Matthew shared in this Twitter thread comes down to the dimensions of the Cybertruck. Tesla staff told Matthew that the latest pre-production Cybertruck is around 5% smaller than the original prototype that was revealed back in late 2019. However, the Cyber Cybertruck will be a full-size pickup truck, and as Matthew also confirmed, it should be very similarly sized to the Ford F-150 Raptor. Matthew tweeted out this chart comparing the F-150 Raptor with 35-inch tires to the Cybertruck with 35-inch tires. And as you can see, the dimensions here are actually quite close, but notice that the Cybertruck does have a longer bed than the Raptor. Now, when it comes to how these dimensions compare to other trucks, here's how these preliminary exterior dimensions of the Cybertruck compare to the Ford F-150 Lightning, the Rivian R1T, 
the Hummer EV truck, the Ford Raptor, and the Ram TRX. As you can see, the Cybertruck will be larger than the Rivian R1T and the Hummer EV, but once again, is very similarly sized to the Ford Raptor, the Ford Lightning, and the Ram TRX. When it comes to how the Cybertruck bed compares to these trucks, you can see that when it comes to the length of the bed with the tailgate up, the Cybertruck has an advantage over these competitors. Moving on, when it comes to new details about the front trunk of the Cybertruck, apparently Tesla has redesigned it and the production version of the front trunk will be similar to the Ford F-150 Lightning's front cutaway design, which I am really glad to hear. However, while this is a welcome improvement to the front trunk of the Tesla Cybertruck, when it comes to additional storage compartments like the side cell storage, according to Matthew Quote, there does not appear to be storage compartments in the Cybertruck cells anymore, but staff would not comment on this. I believe if the side cell storage was still there in the prototype, um, you would be able to clearly see that because there would be a seam where that compartment opens up. So obviously while Matthew didn't get the official confirmation that Tesla is not going to include this storage compartment, it definitely appears like that has been deleted from the final design. Okay, moving on to a design choice by Tesla that not everyone likes. Um, is Tesla going to keep that big, huge wiper that we've seen in some pictures of the Cybertruck. Well, Matthew was able to talk directly to Franz von Holzhausen at the Investor Day event. And Matthew wrote, when I spoke with Woodhouse 2 at Tesla Investor Day, he told me directly that he was happy with the current iteration of the wiper, and that's what is going into production. Another important topic that Matthew included in this Twitter thread has to do with the variants that Tesla will offer of the Cybertruck. Originally, Tesla planned to offer three different versions, a rear-wheel drive version with a single motor, an all-wheel drive dual motor version, and an all-wheel drive tri-motor version. However, back in December of 2021, regarding the Cybertruck, Elon Musk tweeted, initial production will be four motor variant with independent ultra-fast response torque control of each wheel. However, despite that Elon Musk tweet back in 2021, it appears like Tesla has changed their mind on this. And according to Matthew, there are only going to be two variants of the Cybertruck, a dual motor version and a performance version. However, based on comments that Matthew had with Tesla staff, it looks like this performance version will most likely be a tri-motor version like the Plaid Model S and Plaid Model X. It makes sense for Tesla to stick with a proven Model S X Plaid powertrain design and avoid any extra parts and engineering time, etc. In addition, I believe Tesla wants to maximize the range of the tri-motor version. Thus, I believe a tri-motor powertrain will be more efficient than a quad-motor powertrain and should allow for maximum efficiency and allow Tesla to hit the targeted EPA ranges that they're going for. And hopefully the tri-motor variant will indeed be able to reach an EPA range of around 500 miles. When it comes to details about rear wheel steering or four wheel steering for the Cybertruck, in a tweet from July, 2021, Elon revealed that Tesla was adding rear wheel steering to the Cybertruck so it can do tight turns and maneuver with high agility. When it comes to whether or not this will be a standard feature or something you'll have to pay extra for, Matthew did confirm in this Twitter thread that all Cybertruck variants will have four wheel steering. Now, of course, four wheel steering is a very useful feature for a very large truck like the Cybertruck, and it will allow it to have a much tighter turning radius. That's going to be good, of course. However, it's also going to be a feature that I believe Tesla will be able to have a little bit of fun with because, for instance, with the GMC Hummer, they have a feature called Crab Walk, which utilizes the four wheel steering, which allows the Hummer EV to move in a more lateral type motion. I personally believe that the Tesla Cybertruck will have a very similar feature. Moving on to the cabin of the Cybertruck, original designs and images released by Tesla showed the Cybertruck to be a six seater. These images showed three seats in the back and also three seats in the front. And in the original design, if you folded down that front middle seat, it became a center console. However, apparently that center seat design has been scrapped and the Cybertruck will now simply be a five seater. On this topic, Matthew wrote, all Cybertruck variants will have five seats. Due to the beta being 5% smaller than the prototype, Tesla removed the front row center seat. With that being said, it does look like Tesla has upgraded the size of the front center display. And apparently, according to Matthew, the Cybertruck will feature Tesla's largest center display yet at a whopping 18.5 inches. Additionally, Matthew confirmed that there will be no heads up display or cockpit display in front of the driver. However, there will be a rear display screen for the rear passengers positioned on the back of the center console like the new Model S and X have. Another interior change that Tesla apparently made to the Cybertruck that will go into production is a change 
of a steering yoke to more of a steering yoke, steering wheel combination. The new design offers what I believe to be the best of both worlds. It has the roundness on the sides of a steering wheel, but it has the flatness on the top and bottom um, of a yoke. Not quite as low profile as a yoke, but I believe it's going to be more usable for a very large truck like a Cybertruck, but yet still give you a clean view. Moving back to the exterior of the vehicle, apparently the Tesla Cybertruck production version will have a light bar. As Matthew wrote, the Cybertruck windshield light bar will make it to production and contain amber wide width lights like the Tesla Semi. When it comes to the suspension, in addition, Matthew confirmed that all models will include air suspension as standard and that the air suspension system should be robust enough for off-roading activities. Having air suspension in a truck like the Cybertruck really improves the function of that truck quite a bit. For instance, if you put a bunch of weight in the back of the Cybertruck, the truck should be able to balance that load and actually even out the truck so you don't squat in the back with a heavy load. In addition, air suspension allows you to lower the height of the pickup truck when driving down the highway at cruising speeds, and this can improve your efficiency and decrease the consumption of electricity. Um, while you're driving. This should also give the Tesla Cybertruck a mode very similar to the extract mode that the Hummer EV has and allow you to lift the truck very high to get over obstacles while off-roading. In addition, when it comes to loading things in the back of the Cybertruck, as Tesla revealed back at the 2019 reveal event, you should be able to also squat down the back of the Cybertruck and make loading stuff in the back of the truck easier. Now, when it comes to the possibility of self-presenting doors like the Model X features, in that Ride the Lightning podcast interview of Franz von Holzhausen, Ryan McCaffrey asked Franz, quote, so are they, referring to the Cybertruck doors, going to function similar to the Model X front doors where it's going to sense the key fob and pop open for you? Franz responded to that, yes. Ryan followed up by asking front and back doors as well. Franz answered, possibly in the back. There are also buttons on the B pillar and C pillar. However, in contradiction to what Franz said in that Ride the Lightning interview, in this thread, Matthew wrote, quote, the Cybertruck doors are not self-presenting like the Model X. So I don't know what to think about this because we have that recent confirmation directly from Franz where Ryan asked him about that and he confirmed yes, that the that Cybertruck will have self-presenting doors like the Model X. And now Matthew is saying that it will not. So um, this is maybe a last minute deletion, but I wouldn't completely count this out just yet since we did get that recent confirmation from Franz. Apparently also, according to Matthew, Tesla is planning to offer a number of accessories for the Cybertruck, and they actually have a separate team working on developing accessories for the truck. Matthew wrote, the accessories team is designing products for multiple customer personas, off-roading, camping, Baja racing. Now, when it comes to the competition, Tesla actually now has the benefit of being able to benchmark the competition. Trucks like the GMC Hummer EV truck, the Rivian R1T, and the Ford F-150 Lightning. On this topic, Matthew wrote, I asked staff, considering trucks like the Rivian, Hummer EV, Lightning, and Raptor, what's one feature you wish was on the Cybertruck and received? Nothing. We've benchmarked all of those trucks. So while it would be great if Tesla Cybertrucks were on the road right now, at the end of the day, the Cybertruck will be a better truck because Tesla took more time to develop it and because they benchmarked it against other trucks. Now, moving on to one other detail that I want to highlight from Matthew about the Cybertruck. Apparently, the back wall of the Cybertruck bed will not be able to fold down and allow for a complete pass-through design because Matthew wrote, confirmed, there will be no pass-through from the bed to the cabin. I believe the rear window does go down. This is a topic that at Tesla Truck Club on Twitter brought up back in 2020. And at that time, Elon Musk responded, worth considering. Now moving on from that Twitter thread from Matthew, I wanna talk about a few other details, including the fact as Tesla revealed at their investor day event, that the Cybertruck will feature a 48 volt low voltage architecture. In order to make the wires smaller and reduce the weight and size of the wiring harness, Tesla in the future, starting with the Cybertruck, will be moving to a 48 volt low voltage architecture instead of the traditional 12 volt system. And while this seems like kind of a small detail, this is actually a really big move for Tesla and will allow them to once again, reduce the weight of the wiring harness and allow them to reduce a little bit of the weight from the vehicle and also the cost of producing that wiring harness. 
So as far as I know, Tesla is still on track for releasing the production Cybertruck sometime this summer, so that's really exciting. However, once again, Elon Musk mentioned that they don't expect to produce a lot of Cybertrucks here in 2023, but 2024 will really be the year when they expect to ramp up the Cybertruck. On the Cybertruck, while I believe it will be a very efficient vehicle to manufacture in the long term, in the short term, Tesla is really inventing several new ways of manufacturing. And so it's going to take a little bit of time to figure all those processes out and to perfect those. So once again, expect this to take a bit of time. However, once again, though, it's exciting that these Cybertrucks should be hitting the road in not too much time. With that being said, what additional features would you like to see? I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. And also, I'd love to hear from you what you think about some of the details that Matthew revealed on Twitter. I also want to say a special thank you once again to Span for sponsoring this video. And also thank you to all of those of you who support me on Patreon. Your support makes a really big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.